You have the talent. Whether you have the killer instinct is the big question. Hmm. It's just what you always remember is just that coat and the hands. The hands and the gloves and the, these huge eyes. I mean, Em's got these massive kind of car headlamp eyes, so she couldn't be more right for it. But also, because she's her, you're very drawn to her, and that's very important. You couldn't make this film if you didn't really want to watch that person. To first see the entire look of Cruella together, I have to admit, I took a lot of pictures. I did a lot of my, like, you know, I don't have social media, but I would imagine that when you do and you want to take pictures of yourself, that was like my day as Cruella. It was a very narcissistic day, which is perfect for Cruella. It was just, it was so cool. It was so cool to see, to see, you know, people that talented bring her to life in that way and me get to just sit there and have this hair and makeup and these clothes put on me. It was, um, felt very lucky. It, it, it's, it's all emotionally, uh, 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 motivated in terms of Estella to Corella. There's, uh, she's been told, you know, of what she believes is the right thing to do in life and the way that you're supposed to behave. And it's actually a conflict with who she is as a person in the sense of what she's going after. She doesn't think within the lines. So she, for a while, is going against her instincts. And that's where she really suffers the most. And it's not until she really leans into who she is as a person and regardless of the repercussions that she really starts to thrive. And that's partly what the Corella side of her is. The part of that she leans into it for, the motivations unfortunately are, are kind of dark and sinister. So that's where it gets complex and uh, you know, her character gets interesting. I think what's brilliant about it is that you think you know the Cruella de Vil story because we've had a couple of movies and we had the, the I think it was 1961, the original. So I think people's idea of Cruella is that she is this sort of really mean, unhinged woman and she treats animals poorly and things like that. But I think what they're gonna get from this that they maybe didn't expect was seeing how she came to be and seeing like the human side of her. I think this, the movie is really good at showing like a fully fleshed out human being rather than just somewhat a caricature that we've seen in, in, in previous iterations. Do you have a life? Playing the two sides of Cruella, Estella, and Cruella, um, it, it has. It's been it's been really interesting. It's also been interesting to kind of gauge the tone and how different they are. It's one thing to read it on the page, but it's another to really try to do it day in and day out. How much of Cruella is in Estella, and how much of Estella is in Cruella? But I think it's kind of fantastic because it's the personification of those two sides of her hair. You know, there's kind of like the dark and the light. But one of the great things I think about the way that Estella, the the original Cruella, is written is that she's not, if she's the white, she's not like this pure, sweet, um, kind of unattainably, you know, perfect creature. She's full of vim and vigor and she's, feisty and smart and is a con artist. So she definitely has um, a lot of personality, which I love. Creative people can be temperamental. Um, and she has her fair share of mood swings because when you have all these ideas bursting to get out and they can't, sometimes it comes out in the wrong avenue with a bit of attitude. But ultimately she's just desperate to show the world who she is. Emma's character, the Baroness, is a dyed-in-the-wool, narcissistic, over-the-top, fashion-obsessed, Dalmatian-obsessed piece of work. And she's incredible to act with because A, she's Emma Thompson, but B, the character is just so hilarious and so cruel. It's, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like she really it's called Cruella. It's about the making of Cruella, but she really is the, uh, as it is explained later in the movie, she really is the, the OG. It was quite hard for me to be have any friction with M Stone because we, we're sort of such good friends and love each other. So, 
And I'd met her long before, so I knew that we were going to have a good time. So, yes, she's my favourite young American. She's got great, like, evil character to get her teeth into, and she plays it with a sort of combination of real charm and sort of seductive, you know, um, wickedness that I think uh, is just right. It's just delicious to watch. Get her. This doesn't have to be a scene. It really, really does. Can I just remind you all that I'm doing this in heels? Oops. What was your name? Cruella. OK, so this is quite a big budget movie, but Craig is directing it as though it's an independent movie. So you have so much collaborative time and you can have so much fun going, oh, why don't we, let's try this. And there's no constraints and he loves working fast and loose and changing things and, and being a bit risky um, with the material, and I love that. Oh, wonderful actors. There's so many fans. I mean, Joel Fry, Paul Walter Howes, uh, Mark Strong, every single part is so beautifully played. I mean, I can't tell you how much fun we've had when someone just comes on and gives of their, is a turn, you know, and is just brilliant and funny, terribly funny. But it is a two hand, it is a, I mean, the two leads are women who are working and who are adversaries in their work. And you don't see that very often. Fashion was our, was omnipresent in this film. And, and in the beginning, when we were trying to figure out who could do this job, amazingly, we got uh, our Academy Award previous winner, Jenny Bevan, who I couldn't have been more excited about. Hadn't, you know, seen obviously Mad Max Fury Road and she'd done everything from Sherlock Holmes. She, like, she's done it all. It, it was kind of astonishing at times because she came in with not much time, the amount of outfits that she had to figure out, and they really had to be a statement. And it, it, I know she even said it herself, this film was actually much more complex from the costume side because not only were we doing characters and having to create characters with costume, they were both fashion designers, so they both needed their whole fashion line that I knew the audience would be very critical about. It's like, and it has the risk of taking her out of the movie, so in some ways, we spent more time on the fashion lines than the actual characters, because that's, that's, you know, something she's been doing forever. It was, a, it was a tall order, and she absolutely delivered. What I love about all her different looks is, is how far we were able to go with them and how different they all are as well. I always kept think, thinking of her as a kind of master of disguise for a lot of the film, really. So the greatest thing was th the difference in all of them. For the black and white ball, there's a real kind of elegance to that. And I like that there's a story behind everything. So for the black and white ball, I wanted there to be something that was maybe the hairstyle would have been something she would have gone to the black and white ball with had she been invited under different circumstances. But then there's the Cruella kind of real messed up punky look to it as well. So, um, and then the red carpet moments were just so much fun. Those kind of pop up moments. And I don't know what's my favorite. Every time we do one, she steps out of this room and everyone says, that's it, it's my favorite, it's my favorite. But again, I wanted them to look very different. So for the future, she arrives on a motorbike, the costume's sort of more masculine, it's harder, so to have almost like a graffiti written across her face. And the font that I used for that is the same font as Sex Pistols' album. So I wanted that to tie in as well to the punk theme. I love that the garbage dress. It was, I hadn't seen it in person. I had seen pictures of it, so putting it on was just like mind-blowing in a 40-foot train, and it's just, um, it's like things you only ever imagined and think you would actually put on your body and carry behind you on a garbage truck. Yeah, and the, I, my, my favorite piece of, of clothing that they created was the coat at the very end of the movie. The coat in the, the last scene is just beyond stunning. And I am hoping they'll let me take it home with me, but I doubt it. <laughs> Don't worry, there's lots more bad things coming. Perhaps. accident a woman she was demanding money threatening me I I had no idea my dogs were loose I think they, they were chasing someone 